Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. It is indeed an honor and joy to be in the house of the Lord with uh, all of you this morning here. I feel like I'm back home. Amen. I'm back home. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, dear man of God, Pastor Baiju and his family. It's a uh, over the years, we have uh, developed a friendship, and, um, you know, you can never hide anything from him, you know that? <laughs> um, but I thank God for him and his family. Uh, ever since we met him, we kept the relationship, and he is one of my favorite. I told him this before, and uh, he remembers even everyone's name. I don't know how he does it, um, but I thank God for the memory. He's still young in his heart. <laughs> He's still young in his heart, right? Um, but I thank God for his family, especially dear Sister Bina. And uh, I know um, she's gone through a difficult time this year. Uh, I know many prayed for her, um, knowingly or knowingly, um, since everyone knows Pastor Baiju. And of course, everyone knows his family. And, uh, you know, during this Thanksgiving, uh, during this Thanksgiving season, uh, we had a reason, many reasons to praise God, but especially for this church and for the families of this church. You know, we have a special reason to praise God for what God has done, especially in Sister Bino's life. Amen? Yes. Amen. How many of you are happy that this morning Amen. that we serve a God who is still in the business of doing it? And also my niece, um, they call me cousins, but um, Christy Mall and Shan and uh, their children, Zachary and... Um, and Sarah, thank God for them also. Um, also good to see Sister Bincy when she when we were in New York many years ago. She was a youth. Now she's about to be a mom of two. I thank God for them. God is using them here also. Brother Robin and the family and Brother Simiton family. And I know they minister in our church and many of you are here. Um, but I will never forget the first few families who stood with my parents. Um, and I'm so glad when I was sitting here singing that song. My heart was rejoicing, you know, and I was looking at all the youngsters, Brother Sandosh and family, and Brother Johnson and family, Sister Suvandi was there, and there are a few other families that were there too. My parents used to come here every Friday night, stay here for a few days, stay with, stayed with them for two years or so. Um, you know, those who came after, I'll tell you, you know, we faced many challenges and obstacles during that time, not from outside, within our community, we faced many challenges. And he said, maybe six months, maybe three months, this church will not last. Looking back, what, 14 years later, God has blessed us indeed. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah to the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. hallelujah. I talked to my dad this morning. They're visiting India. They will be in India for a few weeks. And they send their regards and love to all the families here, especially to your pastor and family. And uh, please continue to uphold them in prayers. They're still actively involved in ministry. Uh, they just finished one assignment uh, in Dallas, and they're about to take on another one starting in January 1st. Uh, please continue to uphold them. They're 71 years old, but they're young in spirit, doing ministry for the Lord uh, in whatever capacity that God has given to them. My brothers, also, uh, family also send their regards, especially Libin, uh, this morning. Um, I know the time is very limited. I wanted to go ahead and uh, continue um, on the message that I have prepared and God has given to me. Um, along with me, my Simi is here, my wife, my better, better half. I always have to make sure that I say that. And my two little ones, they're not little anymore, uh, both Brianna and Brayden. Uh, thank you uh, for all your uh, hospitality and love towards us. If God's willing, we'll be heading back uh, this afternoon back to Dallas. Uh, continue to uphold us, our ministry and our uh, the work. What are we doing? Just keep us in your prayers. This, mor this morning's meditation, I wanted to read a scripture from First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. All right, um, all right. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them Suddenly, can you say it with me? Suddenly, yes. suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness 
so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You're also children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Can you say with me, awake and sober? For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Verse 11, therefore, encourage one another, build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Amen. Thank God for the words and thank God for the words that God has given to us. The title of the, my message that I have given, it's called the living in the light of the future. Living in the light of the future. This is the word that I've been meditating on for the last maybe two months or so. And I have spoken this word in our church. And Spirit of God was just giving me the unction to continue to stay on this theme for a few more weeks. And I believe, you know, recent, we know what's happening in Israel. And even before all of that happened, one of the messages that God clearly spoke to me into my mind says, prepare my church, amen, for the coming of the Lord. Prepare my church for the coming of the Lord. Some of you have read about the story called the Miracle Mile 1954. Let me read this to you. And seriously, if you can pay attention, there is a, a hidden meaning or hidden message in this uh, story. On August 7th, 1954, during the British Empire and Commonwealth Games in Vancouver, BC, England's Roger Bannister and Australian John Lanty met for the first time in the one mile run at the newly constructed Empire Stadium. Both men had broken the four minute barrier previously that year. Bannister was the first to break the mark with a time of three minutes, 59 seconds on May 6th in Oxford, England. The same year on June 21st uh, in Finland, John Landy became the new record holder with an official time of three hours and 58 minutes. On August 7th, 1954, the world watched eagerly as both men approached the starting blocks as 35,000 fans looked on. No one knew what would take place on that historic day. Promoted, uh, promoted as the mile of the century, it would be later be known as the miracle mile. With only 90 yards to go into one of the world's most memorable races, John Landy glanced over his left shoulder to check his opponent's position. He was consumed by one thought, where is Bannister? At that moment, Bannister went by on his right shoulder to victory in a Commonwealth record time of three minutes and 58 seconds. Landy's second place finish in three minutes and 59 seconds marked the first time the four minute mile had broken by two men in the same race. Landy was interviewed later and he said, if I had not looked back, I would have won this race. Amen. I hope you got the story. I hope you got the message from the story. As a Christian, we all know that we are running a race. Amen. We are all running our race and our future impacts our present. Amen. Our future impacts our present. And I believe in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, we read like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so entangles and let us run with the perseverance that raised marked out for us. Amen. Apostle Paul is reminding the church, let us run this race with what? perseverance that race marked out for us amen all of us are running this race whether you started early or not we're all running this race amen 
But this morning, the Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews said, run this race with what? Perseverance. What is perseverance means? In Hebrew word, it's called hatmara, which means the word continually, always, everlasting. Another translation says enduring and steadfast. Perseverance means being persistent despite the difficulties or delays that we face in our day-to-day life. Children of God, let me remind you and encourage you. Run this race faithfully. Amen? In spite of your challenges, in spite of your delays, in spite of your difficulties, do not lose your focus on God, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our first and the last. He is our bright and morning star. Do not lose your focus as you run this race. Amen? That's why Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians, the verses that you read in chapter 5, Paul is reminding the church in Thessalonica about the day of the Lord and he gives instructions on how to get ready for the day of the Lord. Amen? And I thank God that you have focus, you have aligned your focus because we know soon and very soon we will be taken up from this world. Amen? The day is coming. We don't know when it's going to happen, but as the Bible says, suddenly the the day of the Lord will come. This is the time for us to repent and turn back to the Lord and give our life to the Lord saying, Lord, here I am. I don't want to be like John Landy who turned around and he missed the mark. And I pray that you and I will not get distracted with the things that's going on in this world. You may hear different things in the news and different things in the newspaper. But let me tell you, do not lose your focus because we're looking forward to the Lord and Savior because he is coming back. He is coming back to those who are focused on him, who is looking unto the Lord, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. In the first two verses that you read in the book of uh, First Thessalonians 5, Apostle Paul talks about the believers should be knowledgeable about the day of the Lord when the non-believers are ignorant about the day of the Lord. Amen. Words 3 and 5, 3, three to through. The through five believers expect and hopeful about the day of the Lord when the non believers will be surprised on that day. Amen. Verses six through eleven, six through eight, it says believers should be sober and alert when non believers they are living on the day of darkness. Nine to eleven believers will receive salvation when the non believers receive judgment. So remember, the day of the Lord will be sudden. The day of the Lord will be unexpected. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night with no warning. While people are saying peace and safety, distraction will come upon them suddenly. But for a child of God, for a children of God, it is not going to be a surprise. It is not going to be unexpected because we know that God is coming. And this is not a old new news. This is we know that from the Bible that day is approaching. Amen. The day of the Lord is coming. This morning as I was meditating the scripture a few, a few weeks ago. The spirit of God was reminding me how we can be ready for the day of the Lord. Amen. How do we prepare our heart for the day of the Lord? And this morning, I know we usually hear about messages, about, you know, healing and all the things. But I, this day, Spirit of God is taking me to the nef- next level, saying, prepare my church, prepare my youngsters for the return of the Lord. And I want you to remember, number one, never neglect your spiritual health. Amen. Never neglect your spiritual health. That means never grow cold spiritually. We must take care of our spiritual health just like we take care of our physical body. Amen. In the last few days with Thanksgiving lunch, we all have consumed enough food, right? And I'm feeling it, you know, for being for me being here for the last couple of days. I feel it. I'm just ready to get back home so I can get to the gym. And, and I feel like this morning I tried to put my in a jacket on. I was like, something is wrong. In the last couple of days, I gained a few pounds. I could feel it, right? Something that bothers you. I hope it bothers you when you put extra pound. And you wanted to get back to the gym. You want to go diet and do something because you want to take care of your physical body, right? We take care of our physical body because we know if our physical body is not right, there's anxiety. There's 
anger, there's depression, there's heart disease, and so on. There are medical, many of you are in the medical field. You know what I'm talking about. The same way in our spiritual life, we have to make sure that we take care of our spiritual body. Amen? As Pastor said earlier this morning, he made a very a point was very caught my attention. We never forget to have a cup of coffee. We will not start a day without a cup of coffee. But how many times we missed reading God's word or spending time in the presence of God. And I pray that we will come back to the basics and say, Lord, here I am, Lord. We got to take care of our spiritual body. Amen. If you're so concerned about our physical health, then how much more should we be concerned about our spiritual health? Amen. As we are coming closer to the end of the year, I pray and I encourage you and I challenge you this morning. Take care of your spiritual health. Amen. Take care of your spiritual health by spending time in God's word, meditating in God's word. When you read God's living word, this word is active sharper than any double-edged sword. This word will transform us and change us. Amen? God's word is not just information only. God's word will transform our life inside and outside. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. When you read Revelation chapter 3, we know the chapter, the God speaking to the angel, to the, to the angel of the church. In Sardis, he write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. And I know your deeds. You have reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Therefore, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. If you don't wake up, I will come like a thief. You will not know at what time I will come to you. Amen. This is the message to the church in Sardis who was not taking care of their spiritual health well. The Bible says, I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. What does that mean? Their spiritual lives, as it was on an autopilot. Everything, they started well, but all of a sudden, they grew cold in their spiritual life. And here, here through John, the angel wrote to the church and started, he says, you have a reputation of being what? Being alive, but you are dead. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains is about to die because I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. Listen, we may have given our life to the Lord many years ago. We come to church faithfully. We put our offering faithfully. But this morning, let me ask you, how is your relationship with the Lord? Amen. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the faith. It doesn't matter who your parents are. You know, my parents, my grandparents, those who know my grandparents, they serve the Lord. But it doesn't matter how long they've been serving the Lord. What matters today to me is how is my spiritual health? How is my life when I stand in front of the living God? One day you and I have to stand in front of the church. Hallelujah. And God will look at us and say, I have seen your faith I have seen your work if God says if your work is unfinished how wretched we have become amen remember what you have received and heard and hold it fast and repent amen Zachy you want to come on up for a moment I want to use Zachy for an example this morning I told him that I'm going to use him for a few minutes he was so excited he said you're going to call me to the stage this morning I said yeah of course I am put your hands together for Zachy this morning Amen. Zaki, and we spent a good time with him for the last couple of days, and he didn't want to sleep. He wanted to play all night, and at 12 o'clock, we had to force him to go to sleep. Listen, me and Zaki, we were later, right? We're standing together. You want to look at that direction for a moment? That direction? All right. I'm standing here for a moment. All right. Look, we both are in the same church, right? You all believe that? We both are in the same church, right? And we both are later. Yes, those who know, yes, we are related, right? Sometimes, some people say we both look alike a little bit. When I was young, yeah, I was like, just like Zachy. And, but let me ask you a question. Are we both going to the same direction? 
Amen. We both are related. We both are in the same place. We are standing in the same church. But we both are going to the wrong, two different direction. Listen for a moment. Think about it for a moment. Many times we come to church. Many times we do a lot of things. Many times, especially youngsters, and I've seen it. Now, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about elsewhere. We play church when we come in the house of God. We play music. We do all of the things. But listen, many times we are following, we are going to two different directions. Think about it for a moment. I have ministered with many youngsters in my life for the last 15 years or so. Traveled many places. I have seen many things. But let me tell you, we have to follow together in the same direction. That means parents and children together. Elders and church people together. We have to walk together to one goal. And that's what the Bible says, repent. Amen. Receive, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know of what time I will come to you. And I encourage you, every one of you this morning, amen, stand together. Stand together with the man of God. Stand together with the mission that God has given to you. The mission of GCA is what? Worship, the word, fellowship, and the evangelism. We, I saw that in the overheard few minutes. Stand together, amen, for the mission that God has given to GCA. When you stand together for that mission, I believe God will do mighty things through every one of you, amen. You might be small, you might be weak, but listen, when you come together in one mind, in one spirit, in the one mission, I believe God will do great things for the Lord, amen, in this city, amen. How many of you believe that when you have one vision, when you have one purpose, when you have a one mission, God can use you. Amen. In book of Acts chapter 2, when they came together in one mind, in one spirit. Amen. They were all, the disciples were walking to the same direction. Is that not right? They walked to the same place. They walked. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, Peter got up and he spoke the word of God with 11. Amen. There was nobody was greater. He stood and he preached the word of God with 11 and he spoke the word. How many came to the Lord? 3,000 came to the Lord in the first sermon. It was not the eloquent, the way he preached. It was not the way because he was super, superman. No, he spoke the word with 11. They were walking into the same direction and God used Apostle Paul, Peter. Amen. This morning, let me encourage you this morning, church. When you take care of your spiritual health, when you stand together in unity, God can do mighty things for us. Amen. Thank you, Zachary. Put your hands together for Zachary this morning. Great job. Amen. Since we have been raised with Christ, set your heart things, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hands of God. Set your minds on things above, not on the earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Amen. Moving on, another time is running. Moving on to the next point. Stay spiritually alert how do you take care of your spiritual life how do you prepare your life for the lord's coming number one do not neglect your spiritual health number two stay spiritually alert amen stay spiritually alert you know have you seen people driving and they're stuck before the um, by the red light have you seen there's two different group of people right some they wait for the red light to come so they can check their phone they can check their text they can check their voicemail. They do all of that. And then the light comes, the green comes. He's still checking his email, checking his text, and somebody have to honk him, right? Has anyone has been honked before? Nobody. You're in the church. Do not lie now, all right? Come on. Um, but there are some will there, and they know their light is red, and they're waiting for the green. The, the car is now still stopped. He's still slowly moving. Because he has a plan. He has to get there somewhere. He needed to get somewhere quickly. He is staying alert. He is staying alert. As soon as the green comes, the car is gone. You can't even know where he went, right? The car has disappeared because he is on a mission. He is on alert. He wants to get to his workplace or maybe to church. He wants to be there on time. Be at church on time, right? Never pass the red light, but be alert, all right? So here, see, spiritually, we have to be alert. 
We have to know what's going on in this world. What's happening in Israel, what's happening in Ham with the Hamas tells you something. As a children of God, as a child of God, we have to be spiritually alert. Don't get distracted by the things of this world. We read Paul calls them not to sleep, appealing to them not to be apathetic or uncaring. Believers need to be alert and self-disciplined as they watch for the Lord's return to take them to heaven. That's why Ephesians 5 verses 15 and 16, he writes, Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Amen. The days are evil. First Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith. Amen. We must be aware that we have an enemy. He is not looking to, to make you healthy or he's not making to prosper. No, there is an enemy behind us, always around us. Always stay alert. Don't get distracted by the things of this world. Amen. Don't get distracted by the things of the world. All right, I'm moving on. Have you guys seen this game before, guys, youngsters? Tim Duncan is playing this game against Maps years ago. Right? I'm a Maps fan. Come on. I have to say it. I had to bring it up. Tim Duncan playing making a free throw. I believe this game is taking place in Dallas. But look, he's making a free throw. But look at all the distractions. Look at all the distractions and the noise and the, the white towels and all of that. Look at all the distractions. Is Tim distracted? He is staying alert. His focus is that small rim. He's looking to the room. He's looking at the time. He's not worried about the sound. He's not worried about the noise. He's not worried about the white towels and all of that stuff. He's not worried about the audience. His focus, his goal is what? To get this ball into that small net. Church, many times we get distracted by the things of this world. But this morning, let me bring you back. Let me encourage you to stay alert. Stay alert, youngsters. When you go to college, when you go to high school, you will be distracted. We are living in this world. There are so many things that will distract us from moving forward. But don't get distracted by the things of the world. But things of the world are evil. For a children of God, for a child of God, focus on God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And this is what God has been speaking to me for the last couple of weeks. Encourage, equip my youngsters, equip the church to stay alert, stay positive. Because soon and soon and very soon, we're going to have to leave this world. Don't get distracted by the politics. Don't get distracted what's happening in Washington. Things will happen according to God's will. Don't worry about what's happening around us. Focus on God. Don't miss that mark. Amen. Do not miss that mark. Do not miss that mark. Things of this world will pull us down. But I pray that you and I will continue to focus on him and stay alert. Amen. The third and my final point. Stay spiritually active. Amen. Stay spiritually active. I'm sorry, I don't know if that uh, was wrong or not. Stay spiritually active or alive. Okay. Stay spiritually active. How do you stay spiritually active or stay alive? Number one, walking in the newness of life. Walking in the newness of life. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Newness of life. How do you stay spiritually active? By walking in the newness of life. When you come to Christ Jesus, your dreams are different. 
Your desires are different. Your thoughts are different. You begin to think, the love, act, and talk differently because everything in your life is transformed by our Christ, by our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have a new life. You are a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Amen? You and I are called to be a new creature. Amen? You are a new creation. Orivan Christo Velayal. Amen? You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are not under the law anymore. We are under the grace so we should seek to walk in the newness of life. Amen. And the Bible with the verses that we read tells us how to continue to stay spiritually active. Number one, by walking in the newness of life. Number two, by putting on faith and love as breastplate. The breastplate that protects our body, our hearts and lungs. The Bible says, every Paul is reminding the church to not to spiritually sleep. Remember our identity as people of the day and to dress each day for battle. This means we have to prepare our heart and mind as a soldier. Put the breastplate of righteousness, putting on faith and love. Amen. Putting on faith and love. There are three different stages of faith. And I was listening to Pastor Stanley, Charles, Charles Stanley, who went to be with the Lord a few weeks, a few months ago here in Atlanta. He talked about three stages of faith. If you have heard that message, very powerful word. I hope that you will go back and listen if you can. There are three different stages of our faith in our life. Number one, stage one, little faith. Amen. Abraham, when you look at the life of Abraham, when the Lord promised Abraham he would have a son through a Sarah, he doubt, his doubt made him laugh and, and ask that his male would be accepted instead. Talks about little faith. Then Abraham continued in his faith. The second stage talks about the great faith. When the Lord said to Sarah would give birth within a year, she too laughed and doubted God. But when she conceived her faith and Abraham soared as they saw the Lord's fulfill the promise which talks about the great faith. The third stage of faith is the perfect faith. When Abraham went to the Mount Moriah to offer his son, the Isaac, his faith had become so strong that he obeyed immediately. The Bible says Abraham told his servants that he and Isaac would worship on that mountain, that they would both return. Amen. That is the perfect faith. This morning, Spirit of God reminding us to continue our faith. Amen. Strong in our faith, in our distress, in our trials, in our challenges, in our sickness. I pray that you and I will have a perfect faith. Just like Abraham did. Abraham told the servant, me and my son, we will go and worship and sacrifice and we will come back to the mountain. We will come back to the valley. Amen. This morning and I pray, just like Apostle Paul said, put that faith in our life. Amen. Amen. Since we belong to the date, day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. The last point I wanted to remind you, the hope of salvation as a helmet. Amen. How do you stay spiritually active? Number one, by walking in the newness of life. Number two, putting on faith and love as breastplate. And number three, the hope of salvation as a helmet. Ephesians 6, 17 instructs us to put on the full armor of God. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. When a soldier is ready for battle, the helmet is the last piece. They put on. It was the final act of readiness in preparation for a combat. Listen, we are all fighting this battle. We are in a battlefield. Put the helmet of salvation. Amen. A helmet is very vital for a survival to protect our brain. If our brain is not protected, then we will not be able to win the battle. If our mind, if our head is badly damaged, the rest of the armor would be a little use, right? If our body is, is destroyed, if our head is destroyed, if our brain is distracted, then the rest of things is completely useless. That's why Apostle Paul says the hope of salvation is your helmet. Put the helmet, which is the, your hope of salvation. Amen. How do you make sure your helmet is functioning properly? Number one, by renewing your mind. Number two, by rejecting the doubts that arise from our circumstances. And number three, by keeping an eternal perspective. By keeping an eternal perspective. As I conclude, I want to remind the church. 
I wanted to remind you this morning, do not neglect your spiritual health. Stay spiritually active and stay spiritually alert because the day of the Lord is coming. Verse 11 that we read, Therefore encourage one another, build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Can you close your eyes for a moment this morning? Before the word that we just heard, will you ask the question, Lord, will you pray that prayer this morning? Will you ask the Lord and will you take a few minutes to examine your own life? Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Don't worry about who's sitting beside you. Is it between you and God? How is your life with the Lord? Is your spiritual life healthy? Are you staying active and alert in the presence of the living God? Because the day of the Lord will be sudden and unexpected. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night with no warning. And how do you prepare? Have you prepared your day life for the Lord? Hallelujah, Jesus. Take a few minutes. Take a few minutes to ask the Lord to transform you. Changes. You may have many background. You may have many things you could say, Lord, I have done all these things. But this morning it is between you and God. How is your spiritual life? How is your life with the Lord? Let us come back to him this morning, church. Let us come back to his basic. Let us come back to the basic. Let us throw, look into the throne of grace. Let us ask the Lord to forgive us. Wake up this morning, church. Strengthen yourself. Hallelujah. Your work. Hallelujah. You still have a long journey to go. You still have a long way to go. Wake up and strengthen yourself, church. Strengthen yourself. Don't get distracted by the things of this world. Worship team, if you can come for one second. Hallelujah. As I conclude this morning, I want to remind you, keep an eternal perspective. When life crashes in around us, we must remember to look up. Amen. Reject every doubt that arise from our circumstances. Renew your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Renew your mind this morning by allowing the truth of God's word to wipe out everything that contrary to us. The old ideas, the opinions, and the worldviews must be replaced. We must allow God's truth to continually wash away the world's filled lies and the confusion from our mind and adopt God perspective this morning by renewing your mind is your helmet functioning properly this morning because helmet is a vital for survival is your helmet functioning properly if not ask the Lord to renew your mind reject every doubts that arise from our circumstances and keep an eternal perspective. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name, Jesus. Lord, we worship. If you can take a few minutes, youngsters, especially young ones. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name, Lord. Don't leave the sanctuary the way you came in. Don't leave the sanctuary the way you came in. Come on, can you take a moment to rededicate your life saying, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Prepare your heart, church. Church, be prepared this morning. The day of the Lord is coming. It'll be sudden. It'll be unexpected. Are you ready this morning, church? Are you ready this morning? How is your spiritual health? Are you active and alert in the presence of the living God? Come back to the presence of the living God. He is calling you. He is calling you, church. He is calling you, individual. He is calling you, youngsters. He is calling you, my brothers and sisters. He is calling you, dear uncles and aunts. He is calling you.